If he's awesome, I want you to clap those hands and give him the very best praise that you can give him. You may be seated quickly to the word of the Lord today. Quickly to the word of the Lord. This morning you'll find me in Proverbs, the second chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs, the second chapter, beginning at verses beginning at verse number one, Proverbs the second chapter, beginning at verse number one. Again, thank God for all of our first time guests. Thank you for coming to gather with us on today as we worship and honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together. Proverbs chapter two, Proverbs chapter two, beginning at verse number one. I will be reading down through verse number six on today. Proverbs chapter two, beginning at verse number one, reading down through verse number six. I will be reading out of the New Living Translation of the scriptures. It says in verse number one, my child, Listen to what I say and treasure my commands. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Everybody say amen. amen. I've been in church for a long time, as many of you know, raised in the church, I've been in church all of my life just about. I've always been concerned, always been concerned about a dreaded disease that I hear the saints talk about, if you will. And that dreaded disease is called missing God, missing God. They've always told me, don't miss God, don't miss God. Or the one that I really hate is, you missed God, you miss God. Missing God means you thought you were doing something for him that he told you to do, but you come to find out God never told you to do it. That's missing God. Or you, or you, thought, or you thought you were saying something that he, that he had said say, and you find out that he never said say it at all. Missing God is when God is teaching you something. God is teaching you something you need to know, and you don't get it. You don't get it. And then when you need what he was teaching you, you are unprepared to deal with a challenge that's in your life. That's when we have missed God. I've done that. That's the thing that I do a lot. God is teaching me something, and I don't, and I don't get what God is teaching me. And then when I get into the challenge and now all of a sudden I want to try to act like I know what was going on or what it was showing me, all of a sudden I've missed it completely. So missing God is really not moving when God is moving, not moving when God is moving, not moving when God is moving. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss God. I, I don't want to miss God. And so if I had to give a subject to help you to categorize this message in your intestine filing system of my messages, it would be how to get an understanding of God how to get a understanding of God. Can I teach a little bit on Mother's Day, if you don't mind? Okay, how to get an understanding of God. Remember, uh, I didn't need to go to the scripture because you, if I went to the scripture, you would have quoted it before I was able to read it. Remember, we're told in Proverbs 4 and 7 in the latter part of that verse, in the King James Version, it says that in all thy getting, see, I knew y'all knew it, in all thy getting, get an understanding. And so I want to talk about how to get an understanding of God. And since I'm feeling a little denominational today, since I'm feeling a little denominational today, uh, my subtopic is <laughs> don't miss God. Don't miss God. Don't miss God. I, found, I, I, I have found out a very vital key for us not to miss God is this subject which is being discussed in Proverbs chapter 2. I won't deal with all the elements of the six verses that I read. Rather, I'm going to choose the word that really sticks out in the verse, really sticks out in those verses. It's used the most in this discourse, and that's the word understanding, understanding. Verse number two, look at it again. Verse number two says, tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Verse number three says, cry out for insight and ask for understanding verse number five says then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God and then verse number six says for the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding so I really want to key in on this understanding thing and how we are able to understand God here's something I want to put on the table early if you don't mind you can be in church for years and still not understand a thing 
I, I just wanted to put that on the table early. You can be in church for years and still not understand the thing. You can be in church and be a part of ministries and be doing things in the church and serving in the church and still yet not understand a thing. So just in case you think I wasn't talking to you because you've been in church all your life like me. Matter of fact, I'm talking to me because I want to, I don't want to miss God. And I want to ensure that what I believe that God is saying to me, that I'm understanding what God is saying to me. I don't just, I don't just want to be running around talking about God. God is speaking well if he's speaking do you understand what God is speaking that becomes very vital uh, to our relationship and what we're doing with God now before we go any further uh, we must also understand this is that that there are three rims there are three rims to be recognized as rims of understanding between us and God between us and God first there is the rim of the unsearchableness of God in his ways the unsearchableness of God in his way in other words there are times that God cannot be understood okay he cannot be understood the Bible says that his ways are past finding out okay so there's some time that you got to understand that that is what makes him God okay that there are some times that God just cannot be understood I know you didn't like that I knew I knew that wouldn't go over well with you but but because he's God there's sometimes that you just cannot understand God I don't understand. Matter of fact, I can tell you this that I don't understand about God. I don't understand how I'm here right now. You probably should have said amen when you thought about your own life. I do not understand. I know you've taught me about his love and his mercy and his grace and all that kind of stuff. But I can tell you that I've done some things intentionally to upset his grace and upset his mercy, but I'm still here. Y'all don't have to say nothing to me. Y'all can go ahead and sit there, act like you ain't been there and done the same thing. You knew what you were supposed to be doing, but you wasn't doing it. But yet God still has us here right now today. Praise the Lord. So that's one of the rims of his understanding is that God cannot be understood. There's another rim to his understanding where we are called upon to obey and to go with the Lord in faith without any explanations from him okay without any explanation in other words he could tell us what the explanation is see there are certain things about God that we'll never understand but there are certain things about God that God could tell us but he there are times that he will not explain himself I'm trying to help y'all I'm trying to help you because see if you would know this sometimes you wouldn't frustrate yourself over something there are sometimes that God will simply not explain himself he he just calls us to go and believe him without any understanding or explanation and this is what will happen we will know we have to go on but we will not be able to tell you why we need to go on we, we'll know we'll know we got something that we got to do and stay on a certain course and the only reason we're able to tell you is because God said so I don't know why I got to stay on this job all I know is God said so I don't know why I got to deal with this all I know is God said so he ain't explained it he ain't put it out to me he ain't showed me nothing I ain't had no dream I didn't see no vision I, all I know is God said I'm supposed to be here and I'm gonna stay here because God said so Anybody been saved long enough you had to deal with that? Just God said so, and that's all I know, okay? That's the second realm of understanding that God just decides that he is not going to explain himself. The third level, the third realm of understanding is the realm that I want to deal with. It's, it's the realm that, that we sing about. We used to sing about in the church, you know, uh, uh, the, that old church song, this is the realm where God is trying to tell you something. Okay, God is trying to tell you something. This is the realm that I want to deal with today. I want to talk about today because God said something to me as I was as I was just um, I was doing some study and God said to me, my people don't understand. And then he said to me, you don't understand. Now, see, as long as he's talking about the people, I'm all right. Come on now, let's be real. As long as God talking about everybody else, boy, you'd be like, hey, man, God, go ahead. Speak, Lord. Break it down, Lord. Tell me what you want me to tell them. But as soon as God put me in and said, you don't understand, then I, oh, wait a minute now. Hold up now. You're talking about me now, God. You're trying to tell me, me, the preacher, the pastor. God, I got, I got, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a couple of days away from having 21 years in this pastoral thing. And God, so how you going, to you mean, I don't want to, yeah, yeah, you, there are times that I'm speaking that you don't even understand what I'm saying. And I begin to say to God, well, God, I don't want to miss you, God. Please, 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 God, begin to illuminate my mind so that I can understand. So God said to me, God said to me, he says, they, they keep missing me. You keep missing me. And then he says this, because this what really caught me. Attention. He says, once you miss me, then I have to rescue you. 
y'all said I can teach a little while so let me teach a little while. once you miss me then I gotta rescue you once you once you misunderstand me then I gotta bring you out of some stuff and and, and he said to me he said to me he said listen uh, they need to understand and you need to understand that when you miss me you miss my blessing when you miss me when you don't understand me you miss my provision when you miss me when you misunderstand me you miss out on my protection when you miss me when you misunderstand me you miss out on your assignments you there are some assignments that God said we were supposed to do that we missed because we didn't understand God. And you people that are called to ministry, you need to be very careful. Because a lot of times you think that your call to ministry is about you getting an offering. And because you think it's about you getting an offering, you, miss, you misunderstand God. God don't call you to ministry to make you rich. Well, I'm preaching better than y'all. Amen to me right. He don't call you to ministry to make you rich. He called you to ministry so you can die. Oh, didn't nobody want to amen me right. He calls you to ministry so you can die, so you can give up your life to tell somebody else about this great Jesus that we serve. That's what he called you for. He ain't called you to get no Cadillac. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so because of that, because we, we've gotten so caught up in the, in we, 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 have, we have brought the culture into the church, and we've gotten so caught up in the culture that when God speaks to us about assignment, we begin to filter it through our cultural mind, thinking that, oh, God's getting ready to do this, and God's getting ready to do that. No, God's getting ready to cause you to die in order for you to be used for him. Well, praise the Lord. Let me move on. So, 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 uh, I, I, I want to talk about this thing about how we can, how, 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 how we can understand God and, and not miss God. As a matter of fact, I was amazed at how this subject is illustrated um, through the disciples who, who are no different than we are. No different than we are. Can I just show you a few examples of the disciples' misunderstanding or lack of understanding in succession in the book of Matthew? Let, get, get, get your, excuse me, in the book of Mark. Uh, get, get your Bible real quickly and, and let's just go through this real quickly. Go to Mark chapter 8. I'm going to read a lot of verses, but I want you to see a couple of things. Just, just a couple of things here. And uh, we're we going to be done uh, and go get some breakfast and all that kind of stuff. Um, Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Verse number 14, I need y'all to, I need y'all to hurry because uh, I'm, I'm, I got a lot of stuff I need to read here. Mark chapter 8, verse 14, when you catch up with me, just catch up with me, okay? It says in uh, verse 14, I'm all, all these New Living Translation, but the disciples, but the disciples had forgotten to bring any food. They only had one loaf of bread with them in the boat. As they were crossing the lake, Jesus warned them, watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. As they begin to argue with each other because they hadn't brought any bread, Jesus, listen to this, Jesus knew what they were saying. So he said, why are you, why are you arguing about having no bread? Don't you know, listen to this, don't you know or understand even yet? Or are your hearts too hard to take it in? You have eyes, can't you see? You have ears, can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all? Listen to that conversation. Jesus is saying to the disciple, I just now spoke something into your life and y'all don't even understand what I'm talking about. And y'all are arguing about who didn't bring any bread and that wasn't even the subject that I was bringing up. If you continue to read, and I don't have time to continue to read it, he began to say to them, hey, listen, hey, listen, don't y'all remember that when we was in the wilderness and there was this, we had two fish, five loaves of bread, how many people did I feed? Don't y'all remember when there were 4,000 people and I fed them with, in other words, y'all don't need to argue about bread. I can make bread happen at any time. Uh -huh. I can make that happen. So don't, so don't misunderstand what I'm talking to you. I'm, a, I'm talking to you about something that, that, that li listen to what he says again, that in verse number 17, he says, are your hearts too hard to take it in? In other words, listen, if you're going to be able to understand me, then you have to condition your heart to receive what I'm saying. One of the reasons that we don't understand God like we ought to understand God is because our hearts have become too hard to God in order to receive what God is saying. Okay, y'all don't want to talk about that. So, so he says, your hearts were too hard to take it in. Your hearts were too hard to take it in. And so I started thinking about that. I was like, God, is my heart too hard to take in what you're saying? I, I, am I, am I, is my heart so hard that when you speak, it reflects, it just bounces off. Whatever you say just bounces off my heart and goes back to you because my heart's too hard to take it in. He says three things about them. He says three things about them. He says, number one, you can't see. He says, you got eyes, you can't see. He says, you got ears. Number two, you can't hear. Then he says, number three, you don't remember at all. You can't remember. 
So he says three things about them. You can't see, you can't hear, you can't remember. Oh, see, y'all don't want to talk to me, but I'm going to talk. You can't see, you can't hear, you can't remember. You can't see a thing, you can't hear, you can't remember. When I looked at that, I said, God, I hope that's not me. I hope that's not me. Now, see, y'all going to sit up here and y'all going to be the, you know, the, 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 the guy on the throne today. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good. I see everything. I hear everything. I remember everything. But you better hear my preaching because I'm trying to help us. Okay? He says you can't see, you can't hear, you can't remember. You can't see, you can't hear, you can't remember. That, I said, Lord, I don't want to be in the state where I can't see, I can't hear, I can't remember. Because if I can't see and I can't hear, I can't remember, then there is no way that I'm able to fulfill your will in my life. And God says, many of my people sit in church week after week. They can't see, they can't hear, they can't remember. They can't see, they can't hear, they can't remember. When it's time for them to see their way, they can't see their way. When it's time for them to hear something that will change their direction, they can't hear it. And when it's time for them to remember something that has already occurred, they can't remember it. And that's why the devil is able to defeat us. Is anybody listening to me at all? So Jesus said, the reason why y'all can't understand is because you're not taking time to see, hear, or remember. Okay, let me move on because I can preach about that a long time. Same chapter of Mark chapter 8. I just want you to see this in succession. Same chapter because when I read this, I was like, God, you're going to have to help us. Same chapter, Mark chapter 8, verse number 31. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? Then Jesus, then Jesus began to tell them, look, look at this. Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, the teachers of religious law. He would be killed. Listen to this. But three days later, he would rise from the dead. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, not just Peter, but he looked at his disciples and then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Okay? Now, note what happened here. Jesus is openly, clearly telling them, articulating to them that, hey, listen, this is going to happen to me. Three, I'm, I'm going to be killed. Three days later, I'm going to rise again. Peter ain't understanding this. He just, he just ain't getting this. this I, I'm, not, I'm not getting this. And so Jesus, Peter takes him and, and takes him in private and says, look, 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 I need to reprimand you. I, I don't know how Peter is going to reprimand Jesus. I don't know how Peter is going to rebuke Jesus, but Peter is getting ready to rebuke Jesus. That's some power. Peter's getting ready to rebuke Jesus. He's reprimanding him. Say, listen, 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 listen. All that stuff you talking about, I don't understand it. And so therefore, because I don't, listen to it, because I don't understand it, you can't say it. That's what he's saying to him. Because I don't understand it, I don't want you saying it. Okay? And, and so Jesus, uh, I, I, I love how it puts in New Living Church, uh, that, that as Jesus takes, is, is in private with Peter, he turns around and looks at all the disciples and says, get behind me, Satan. Now, y'all know when, I, when, I, when we talk about this part of the story, I'll always like to mention that y'all always say that Peter, that Jesus wasn't calling Peter Satan. And um, I, I hear y'all, I, I hear y'all, but if he would have said it to me, I would have took it like he was calling me Satan. Okay, uh, I know what y'all saying. I, I know y'all so theologically sound, and you look into the depth of the thing. But but if I if I right now was in a conversation with you, and you said something to me, and I looked at you and said, "Get away from me, Satan," what you would say to me is that I did you just call me the devil? So let's be real with the let's be real with it. Peter didn't take it like Jesus wasn't calling him Satan. Peter took it like, dude, did you just? Oh, okay. He just called me Satan. But, but I want you to catch what he says here. You're seeing things, you're seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Now, I wrote this down. You will miss God if you're looking for him from merely a human perspective. From merely a human perspective. You will never understand him by trying to filter him merely, merely through our reasoning abilities. Merely through our reasoning ability. A lot of times the reason why we don't understand God is because we bring our reasoning to the table and we try to filter what God is saying through our reasoning abilities. In other words, if it don't make sense to me, it's not God because my reason says that there is no way that God wants me to do this because I don't know how to talk that my reason says that there's no way that God wants me to go this way because I've never been that way before my re why y'all not talking to me we take 
what God says and we misunderstand it because we filter it through our reasoning abilities. So in Peter's reasoning ability, he is saying that the Savior, the Messiah that I'm serving didn't come here to do no dying. He came here to set up his kingdom that I'm getting ready to be a part of. I'm about to be a general in his kingdom and he's talking about dying. That does not match up with my reasoning ability. And so whenever you try to match up God with your reasoning ability, you're probably going to misunderstand God. This is what he says and you know it. He says this and I say I won't go there. But he says my ways, not your ways. Come on now, y'all talk to me. My thoughts not your thoughts okay so don't try to take my thoughts and filter them through your thoughts because it's not going to work i'm god i'm god i'm not you i'm god okay there, there's this occasion and forgive me for getting on my notes i'm trying my best to finish this message quickly as i can but there's this occasion well, you, you remember the story of job of course and job is is finally got to the place where job is complaining a little bit about what's going on I don't want y'all to ever think that Job didn't complain a little bit. He began to complain about it a little bit and then even said this. He, Job decided, you know what, I cursed the day that I was even born. At that point, at that point, God got a little salty about that, you know, because you don't have, you don't have the right to curse something that God is blessed. Are uh, y'all listening to my preaching? No. You don't have the right to curse what God is blessed. Because so, you don't have the right to curse what God is blessed. Then God got kind of got upset with that. And he, so he called Job on the carpet. He's like, hey, Job, where were you? Where, where, where were you when I made the earth? Where were you when I put the sun in the sky? Where were you when I threw the stars up there? And they've been up there for all eternity. Where were you, Joe? In other words, Joe, let me tell you something. Don't let your mouth get on with my stuff now. You, you, you might not understand what's happening with you and what's going on with you, but, but watch yourself. Because you're, you're operating in something that's above your pay grade. got to leave it alone you got to better leave it alone and, 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 and so you're looking at it from merely a human point of view and not God's point of view so let me move on because I got so much to say and I, I don't want to keep y'all here too long so so then let's go to Mark chapter 9 again just in succession I told y'all I had a lot to read Mark chapter 9 come on y'all leave, you, leave your Bibles iPads open or whatever you got to do um, Mark chapter 9 and uh, verse number 9 and 10 I'll skip a couple of things here um, I, I'll skip the thing of the, of the transfiguration because they didn't understand that either Matter of fact, if you read it in New Living Translation, because in the first part of Mark chapter 9, they have the transfiguration. Just in case you don't know what transfiguration is, I shouldn't have even brought it up. Transfiguration, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, and they go um, up into a mountain to pray. And while, while he's up there praying, the Bible says that Jesus gets transfigured and, and before them. He changes. He changes before them. The glory of the Lord is so, the Shekinah glory of the Lord is so upon him that he changes before him. And so as he changes before him, um, um, who, who shows up? Moses and, and Elijah? Is that who? Yeah. Moses and Elijah shows up and when Moses and Elijah shows up um, 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 Peter the Bible the New Living Translation said Peter began to say um, let's build let's build three tabernacles one for Jesus one for Moses one for Elijah and then the Bible says that because he didn't know what else to say that's what it said he didn't know, he didn't know what else to say so he, he just he just needed to say something let me tell you something when you don't understand God keep your mouth shut there's some good teaching there's some good teaching there's some good teaching right there so let's go to Mark chapter 9 verse number 9 verse number 9 so this is this is after that episode is over it says this and when as they went back down this is good teaching y'all I need to teach this to you as they went back down the mountain this verse number 9 as they went back down the mountain he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the son of man had risen from the dead so check this out so they kept it to themselves but listen to this but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead again no understanding not being able to understand even though they're hanging out with him they are in his presence but still don't understand don't think that because you come to church and get in his presence that you understand oh yeah this is better preaching than y'all get okay they, they, they're talking to themselves they're like what did he mean what did he mean what did he mean a, a, a part of understanding God is allowing him is allowing him to teach me when, when not because listen to me listen I need you to catch this part I'm going to slow down just one second okay in, in my last point I said that we have to be careful of, of taking what God says to us and filtering it through our human reasoning right didn't I just now say that now I'm getting ready to say something that sounds like it's, I'm getting ready to contradict myself because one of the things that we have to be careful of is that when he says something to us that we don't spiritualize what he says 
I need you to hear what I just now said. Okay, sometimes when God speaks to us, we cannot filter it through our human reasoning. But there are some times that God speaks to us that we cannot spiritualize what he says and understand that what he's saying is a literal thing. Okay, when he was talking to his disciples about, listen, I'm going to rise from the dead. They're going, what did that mean? Well, can I tell you what it meant? It meant he was going to rise from the dead. That's what it meant. It meant that he was going to rise from the dead. So they're going around talking about, well, God, what, well, I don't know what that means. What, is, is he trying to be metamor? Is, is he trying to give us a, a metaphor here? Is he trying to tell us something, you know, where we're supposed to get some spiritual meaning out of it? No, he's telling them what's really going to happen. And so one of the challenges, let's talk about this. One of the challenges in us understanding God is to know when to just accept it as, as just simple reasoning or when is it beyond just human reasoning are y'all listening to me at all okay and so we've got to know that and I'm, I'm gonna show you in the end if I get to the end I'm gonna show you in the end how we are able to make that determination about how to accept what is going on here because I, I went, went so went, a part of understanding God is allowing him to teach me when not to filter him through human reasoning and when to filter him through my spiritual reasoning because there's sometimes where I'm not supposed to filter him through my through my human reasoning and then there's sometimes I am supposed to filter him through my spiritual reasoning so that they, they, they were trying to spiritualize a natural event they were trying to spiritualize a natural event that's why if God says something to me about he's gonna give me a job okay I don't spiritualize that God's gonna give me a job Okay, what I do is I say, you know what God's get ready to do? God's get ready to give me a job. Now, what some people would do is that they will spiritualize that. They would say, well, what that means is, is that God's going to give you a ministry. Come on, why don't y'all talk to me? Come on, that's what they'll tell you. What that means is God will give you a ministry. Because a lot of people, you know, especially people that are, that are, that are dream interpreters, they have the ability to spiritualize just common events. Well, y'all don't talk to me. People that are prophetic have the ability to spiritualize just natural events. So what I want God to allow us to do is to come to a place of understanding. God, what do we spiritualize and what do we accept as just literal? Is Okay, let me, let me move on. Let me move on. This is going, I'm going to get us somewhere in a, in a quick minute here. So let's continue to read. Go to Mark, stay in Mark chapter 9. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? I promise you when I finish reading this, we'll be done. Um, not this one, but uh, um, yeah, I'm getting there. Um, Mark chapter 9, um, um, verse 28. Mark chapter 9, verse 28. Just want to continue to look at this. Just, just things that are going on here just are amazing me. Um, Mark chapter 9, verse 28. Afterward, afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Now, y'all know this story, this story of, of, of the guy, the dude, he has a son. Um, the, the son is a lunatic son. You know, he's, he kind of goes crazy, you know, every time something's going on. And uh, they brought the son to Jesus, excuse me, they brought the son to the disciples, and they, they wanted the disciples to cast out the devil. And, but the disciples could not cast out the devil, okay? Now, they didn't understand why they couldn't cast out the devil. And how many of us, you don't have to talk back to me, I'm just talking to us in, in general terms. How many of us at a place where we got something, we know we got a call on our lives, but we don't understand why it's not working? Okay, I don't want you to talk to me. I'm just, I'm just talking in general, just a rhetorical question. You don't have to talk to me. We got something over our life, and we don't understand why it's not working. Why haven't I been able to get that person delivered as of yet? Why haven't I been able to get that, that situation changed as of yet? Why haven't I been able to get this person out of... Okay, so, so, and, and come on now, can we just be, can, have you ever prayed about a thing and the thing didn't change and you wanted to know why? I've been there. Man, again, I, so I'm just trying to be honest. I'm just trying to have an honest conversation with y'all. It seems like y'all want to be all deep and spiritual on me. I'm just trying to have an honest conversation that sometimes we pray about some stuff and it don't know, it does not change, it does not, and we don't understand why. So here they are. They just now prayed over that boy. Now, the thing that really, it just really irks them. Come on, come on, cause, cause, come on now. This really irks them is that Jesus came along, rebukes the devil, and the devil goes. Now, I know that in the church, we're not supposed to be competitive. But come on now. If you've been dealing with a thing, and you've been praying over the thing, and trying to get the thing free, and somebody else just come along and say, in the name of Jesus, be gone. I'm going to try to keep my spiritual mind as much as I can. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to be something that's going to click on the inside of me. Be like, doggone it. I've been praying over that thing for three years, and here they come. 
in three seconds and they got the thing delivered. Come on now. And we don't understand. And so they don't understand, Jesus, why couldn't we cast out that devil? I don't understand why I've been praying over and didn't nothing happen. They needed to get an understanding of that thing. And so, and, and, and so uh, let me hear it here. Uh, and, and so they, they were not understanding why they couldn't achieve what they knew that they had been destined into the kingdom to achieve. This is, of course, what Jesus teaches them about three things. He teaches them about three things. And these three things are very important to our understanding of why sometimes things don't happen the way they ought to happen. You're going to get mad at me, but I'm going to tell you about them anyway. Three things that Jesus teaches them. First of all, he teaches them faith. He teaches them faith. Okay, he tells them, he says, listen, he says, he says hey, y'all, y'all got to have faith to do this type of stuff. Okay, it takes faith to do this. Okay, a lot of times things don't happen because we don't have faith. And you need to understand that. Well, brother preacher, you can be talking to me because I've been in church and I always got faith. No, some, you, sometimes you don't have faith for the level of what you're dealing with. Oh, let me hurry up here. And so the third thing, he, he says, I need to tell you all about faith. You got to have faith to deal with. The second teach lesson point he teaches them is about praying. Praying. He says, you got to pray. Okay. How be it this kind going forth but by prayer. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to be serious and sincere. You got to have fervent prayer in your life. Okay, you got to keep on praying and pray over it and pray over it and pray over it with the faith and the prayer, knowing that they're working hand in hand. Then he brings them to the third point that I don't know if I want to talk about or not. But I guess I'll bring it up since he brought it up. He said fasting. He said this kind go forth but by prayer and fasting. And you need to understand that the reason why you weren't able to do what I just now did is because you don't have those three things working like they ought to be working. I know you're hanging out with me. I know you see me praying. I know you see me fasting. I know you see what I'm doing. But until you get these three things in your life, these viable things in your life, you'll never see what you think that you ought to see. So you got to you gotta have faith. You got to pray. You got to fast. Now you understand why it's not happening the way it ought to happen. Okay, let me move on and move on and move on. And so, so he teaches them that. And so now when we get to the same chapter of Mark, I'm, I got so much to say. Lord, help me to say it in the next five minutes. Go, next chapter in Mark 9, Mark 9, and then verse number 30. Listen to this. It says, um, leaving that region, leaving that region, after I've just now taught y'all about faith, praying, fasting, leaving that region, they traveled through Galilee. Jesus didn't want anyone to know he was there. For he wanted to spend, I want you to catch this verse, please. For he wanted to spend more time with his disciples and teach them he said to them the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies he will be killed but three days later he will rise from the dead look at verse number 32 they didn't understand what he was saying now listen to this tragedy however and they were afraid to ask him what he meant did y'all did y'all see that in, at all I'm trying to get us to understand that, 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 that having an understanding is very important. It's very vital to our relationship with God. It says here that Jesus, this, this caught my attention, that Jesus decides, you know what I got to do? I got to spend more time with them. I, I believe that he realizes that he has to spend more time with them because of those four episodes that I just now took you through. They just now went through four episodes of proving that although they're hanging out with him, they still don't understand nothing. So he's like, I need to spend some more time with them. Let me tell you something. You may not like, like what I'm getting ready to say, but God is determined to get you to a place of understanding. But he wants you to understand that the only way he's able to get you there is that you've got to put more time in. You've got to be willing to spend more time with God. I just now messed up. I just messed up. You got to be willing to spend more time, less time with TV, more time with God. Less time on the video games, more time with God. Less time on the internet, more time with God. You've got to be willing to spend more time with God. If you're going to get to a place of understanding, he's got to be able to have time with you. God said to me, he said, this where you miss it at, right there. That's where you miss it at. You don't have enough time for me. You got time for everything else, but you don't have time for me. If you will make some time for me, then your understanding level will be illuminated, and you will see more than you see. You will hear more than you hear. You will remember more than you remember, but you don't have the time to spend with me. Why y'all don't want to talk to me? Why y'all are not talking to me? So Jesus said, you know what I got to do with them? I got to spend more time with them. God doesn't want us to be to walking around in ignorance. 
He wants us to understand him, understand his will. And is this too much? Y'all want me to stop now? I'll stop. Okay. He wants us to understand those things. So he says, I got to spend more time with you. Listen to me. God's saying this to you today. God's saying, I want to spend more time with you. Did you hear that? God says, I want to spend more time with you. I want to spend more time with you. I got some things I need to teach you, some things I need to show you, some things I need to illuminate into your mind. I want to spend more time with you. Now, the second thing I want to tell you about this story that I just want to, just want to uh, uh, catch real quickly is that the astonishing part of the story to me is that they didn't understand, but they were too afraid to ask him. They were too afraid to say to Jesus, Lord, we don't understand. I begin to realize the problem in the church with all y'all that got all these titles walking around here like you know what you know and you don't know nothing is that your problem is is that you won't humble yourself before God and say God I don't understand I don't want anybody to know in the church that I'm at a place where I don't understand I don't want nobody to know that I just don't know but you need to humble your little behind and get before God and say you know what God I don't understand yes I've been preaching for 10 years but I don't understand yes I'm working in children's ministry but I don't understand and especially I need you to hear me if you're working any ministry and you don't understand you need to get on your face before God because you are messing other people up you are messing other people up with your limited revelation with your limited knowledge you are telling them stuff that you that you have not even you have not even gotten it from God and now we have to live what you're saying because we trust your call. We have to stay on our face before God and say, God, I don't understand. 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 I'm determined to stay before God when I don't understand and say, God, I don't understand because I don't want to mess up them folk to come to true vine. I don't want to give them something that's not from you. And then they go out and live it and get results that are not kingdom results. If you don't, look at somebody say, if you don't understand, you better get an understanding. I want you practicing on me. I don't want you. I want you practicing on me. I want you practicing. No, 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 no. If you don't understand yourself, don't be practicing on me. Don't be speaking over me. Don't be putting your little nasty hands on me. If you do not understand yourself, you better get in God's face until you understand. Jesus said, I got to spend some time with y'all so y'all can understand. Then I'm, I'm giving you the ability to understand it, but you won't cry out for that understanding. Let me hurry. Remember Proverbs 2 and 3, two and three where we began. It didn't, it didn't say don't be afraid. It said cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Would you let me read one more story? Just one more, I'll be done. I promise Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, go to the next chapter. I'm, I'm, man, when I was reading this stuff, I was like, God, help us. Check this out. One day, this verse 13, I'm sorry. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples, this part is not in your Bible, I'm adding it, who didn't understand scolded the parents for bothering him when Jesus saw what was happening he was angry with his disciples and said to them let the children come to me don't stop them for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children can you see that they were misunderstanding even the purpose of Jesus Christ they were bringing children to him to get blessed and these disciples who apparently felt like Jesus was some celebrity superstar preacher who you couldn't touch or speak to or bring children to were like no get them children away from Jesus Jesus did not come to be a celebrity he came to be a savior the problem in the church can I talk to the churches real quickly the problem in the church is that we've got more people who are seeking celebrityhood rather than seeking servanthood we were never intended to be celebrities we were intended to be servants 
And if you have gotten too high where you can't speak to nobody, can't nobody come up to you? And, no, no, you, you have simply gotten too high. We were never meant to be celebrities. We were meant to be servant. And if you don't, if you have a misunderstanding of that, because you have a gift on your life, your gift don't make you a celebrity. Well, let me hear it here. Let me hear it here. The gift don't make you no celebrity. So they had a misunderstanding of what Jesus was all about. He didn't come to be some untouchable celebrity. You remember the, God, don't, Lord, don't give me no more stories. I need to get out of here. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? Didn't nobody want to be around her. But as soon as she touched Jesus, because Jesus was touchable, Jesus said, who touched me? They like all these people here, all these folk touching. He said, no, 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 no. All these folk, all these folk are hanging out for celebrity status. But there's somebody here that wants a genuine touch from me. And that's what I came for. So I want to know who really touched me. I'm not talking about who brushed up against me. I didn't come who came. I ain't talking about who came to hang out in the meeting. I want to know who came to touch me so that I can touch them back. Lord have mercy. Y'all sit down. 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 Sit down. I, I'm just about done. So, so they had a misunderstanding. Uh, so, so, so in my closing, hallelujah. <laughs> so in my closing, what, what are we to do to understand so I can understand God so that I don't miss God? Okay. A couple of things I want to tell you and I'm done. First, we have to take to heart the father's teaching. We have to take to heart the father's teaching. We have to treasure what God says okay I want you to hear me we have to take to heart the when God is saying something we got to take it to heart you know you know how it is you know you can tell somebody something that's important but you can tell they're not really taking it to heart you know because they don't think it is serious as you talking about uh, and all that kind of stuff and you, you, you be looking at them to, are you hearing what I'm saying are, are you sure you're getting what I'm saying to you well when the father speaks to us we have to take it to heart we have to treasure what he says we got to understand this and I need you to hear this every time he speaks there is something that he's saying that you need to hear so I never ever sit in the sanctuary especially when God is speaking through a man or woman of God and go that message is for somebody else I don't need to hear it I don't care what God is saying there is something in there that I need to hear and take to heart so that I can live for God and the reason why a lot of us a lot of us a lot of us have misunderstood God or have missed God is because we sit in the sanctuary and we always think that God is preaching to somebody else and he's not preaching to you as a matter of fact there are many of you sitting here listening to me preaching this message right now and all you are saying was I understand God and you are missing this and because you are missing it you're going to miss some of the things that God has for you in your life so what you got to do is you approach God you have to watch your attitude I watch your attitude okay because I have attitude just matter of fact I probably got more attitude than you got okay I, I, I got attitude and so if I know that you get ready to tell me something that I already know I got it you can't you can't tell me what I already know I already know that why you why you why you wasting my time telling me what I already know I already know I do this I, I get, get, because a lot of times I need you to hear me a lot of times what God will show you will not be new and what we do, because we are so, we are so caught up in new stuff and new things. And when God speaks to us, the old stuff, I already know that. Well, can I tell you this? If you already really knew it, God wouldn't have to tell you again. He tells us, I don't want you to just be a hearer of the word. I want you to be a doer of the word. So there are many times that when I tell some, somebody something over again, sometimes in my mind I'm going, why am I telling this, and them, this over again? But then I begin to realize the reason why you got to say it again because they don't understand it yet. So you got to keep telling them. God don't want you to fornicate. Don't they have that by now? No, they don't have that now. They got it while there's nobody trying to get them in the bed. But let somebody make an offer. Well, I'm preaching better than y'all. Amen to me. Yeah, these single people, they are very chaste. They're very pure. While nobody's making an offer. But let somebody make the right offer. 
Don't nobody want me to preach this part of the message. Don't let anybody make the right offer. Because if you make the right offer, and by the way, by the way, just in case you, you don't know, I used to be single, so I'm not, I'm not preaching out of something I heard. I'm preaching out of something I know. When I was single, I was very pure, as long as I could hear what God was saying, and wasn't nobody making an offer. But I had a couple of times where, um, I ain't going to mention her name, but I, the name offer, I had some offers. And both of us was in the church, but the offer was on the table. And you don't bring the offer, you don't, you don't bring the word to the table when the offer is on the table. So I got to treasure what God says. Listen to this now. If I'm going to have the understanding, I got to treasure what he says. I got to take to heart what he says. If he says, if you do this, this is going to happen, I got to take it to heart. Many of us would have been further off in our lives if we just would have listened to our mothers and fathers. If we just would have took some of that stuff to heart. If we just would have literally listened. Come on now. But we didn't take it to heart. I'm grown. I'm grown. I got this. The older I get, the more my mama is right. Come on now. Am I telling the truth? The older we get, the more mama and daddy was right. Well, in the same sense, God is always right. Second thing, second thing that's got to hurt and close this. Second thing is that, that there must be an open ear and an open heart. There must be an open ear and an open heart. An open ear and an open heart. The Bible says this, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I'm, I'm moving very quickly. I got a lot to say. I, I, I hope you just understood what I just now said. So and as a part of this, as having the open ear, I wrote this down. I wrote this down. Be an attentive listener and not a compulsive talker. Be an attentive listener and not a compulsive talker. If you're going to have an open ear and an open heart to God, you have to be an attentive listener and not a compulsive talker. You can't be talking all the time, gabbing and just going at it all the time. God's trying to get some understanding into your life. Proverbs 18 and 2 says this. When you get a chance, check this out. Proverbs 18 and 2 says this, New Living Translation. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. Last thing I want to say, last thing I'm going to say is that if you're going to be, a, if you're going to understand, get to this place of not missing God, you have to really mean business. You have to cry out, send out an appeal for understanding. The verse that I begin with in my closing, the verse that I begin with, Proverbs 2 and verse number 3 says, tune your ears to wisdom, concentrate on understanding, cry out cry out for insight and ask for understanding if we're going to be able to understand God and not miss God listen to me y'all we're going to have to cry out for understanding because listen to me I've been saved long enough to, to say this with some level of confidence the Bible says seek and ye shall find seeking is a active going after a thing I do not have to seek for my iPad. You know why? Because it's right here. It's right here. But if I wanted to know where my keys were right now, I would have to go into my office. And I don't even think they're in my office because I thought I, I think I just brought in one key. They're probably in my car somewhere. Be and I would have to look around for them. That's seeking. If we're going to understand God, you're going to have to seek God. Go after him. You're going to have to have a singleness of a purpose. There's going to have to be sometimes you're just going to make up your mind. You know what? I don't have time for nobody else but God right now. Because God has said some things, and I want to understand them. God has showed me some things. I want to understand them. I want to be in his will. I don't want to miss them. And so I need to seek that thing. I want to go after that thing. So I want to teach this, on, teach this to us on this morning. As individual and as a church, we got to seek to understand God. What is he saying? What have I taken that he said out of context just to fit my situation? 
I'm going to dress down his word in order for it to fit my situation. God says, I don't want you doing that. I want you to understand what I'm saying about a thing and live by that thing. Stand up with me, y'all. Stand up. Thank you, sir. Better be good the way you rush the stage. It's just, it's just, it's, uh, understanding. If there's some of you that are, that are where I am, I'm just there. I feel like this, this moment in my life is critical. And I need to have an understanding. That's who I'm preaching to. It's just, I just feel like this moment in my life is critical and I need understanding. I don't want to miss God. I don't want to miss God. I don't want to miss God. I don't want to miss him. Would you just come join me? I don't want to miss him. Come on. We'll get ready to pray here in a moment and we just don't want to miss God. A few more that are still coming. We get ready to pray. Oh, Shadda Baba say. Oh, my mama say, Shadda Baba say. Father, we yield to you. We yield to you. We yield to you. We yield to you, Lord because we don't want to miss you can't afford to miss you can't af we cannot afford to misunderstand you're speaking clear words as you spoke to your disciples clear words and they still were like what does it mean we don't understand father i pray for us that stand around this altar and we yield our will to you we yield our attitude our mind our thoughts to you we are attentive we are attentive right now to what you want to say and what you want to teach us. We take time right now to say, God, speak to our hearts. Speak to our hearts. Speak and say what you desire to say and how you desire to say it. For Father, we don't want to miss you. We don't want to make a move. That's the wrong move. We don't want to say a thing. That's the wrong thing. Speak to us. We cry out for understanding. We cry out for understanding. Please, Lord, we don't want to go astray. Please, Lord, we don't want to miss you. Father, we cry out for your will. We set aside our human reasoning. And we say, whatever your will is, we choose your will. So, Father, even as Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus, I pray now for all these that stand with me at the altar. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. You won't miss God. God says, I will spend time with you. And God says, I will pour into you. I will pour into you what you must know. 
God says within the week, within the week, within the week, within the week, I am going to be pouring into you what you need to understand and what you need to know. I hear the Lord saying, I hear the Lord saying, don't harden your heart, soften your heart. Soften your heart. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing and what you're saying. In Jesus' name, you will understand. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.